Hi, this is Alan Cowell, and I am delighted to be bringing you this training today. You see, normally I teach folks how to attract private lenders, or I uh, show them how to stay safe with the SEC. But one of the things that uh, I never seem to get enough time doing is showing folks how to manage the private lenders, uh, the whole process from A to Z. And so I've decided to uh, uh, carve out a webinar here and, um, and show you exactly uh, what I do to manage private lenders because I find there is such a huge need out there uh, to have this training. And, um, you know, even if you've only got one private lender, maybe you don't have any, but uh, someday you might, you don't know, you know, you might lose your job or uh, the bank turns you off, uh, off down and uh, you find that uh, the only way you keep your business going and, and uh, keep things happening is to is to do what I do, is to find private lenders to fund my deals. Um, you're going to find that this training is is critical. Uh, in fact, I'm only going to be teaching things that I normally only teach at my live events. So I'd recommend that you get out a pad and a pen, and because um, you're going to take a lot of notes. I'm going to deliver a phenomenal amount of information right now in training, and and also you want to stay all the way to the end. Um, I, I know you had on a lot of webinars, but it's critical you do this on uh, this particular one because I want to make sure that you have the whole picture on how you manage the the private lenders. It's just uh, just very important that uh, that you don't have a missing link out there someplace. So I want to talk about the uh, how this system uh, came about. Uh, first off, the first two years that I had private lenders, obviously, there's a lot of trial and errors. It wasn't. Uh, there wasn't a lot of resources out there to to get information. You know, people would tell me to go get private lenders, but they didn't tell me how. And then once uh, you got a private lender, well, uh, you know, frankly, I just had to learn by the uh, seat of my pants how to how to get it done. And uh, kind of let you know on some of the mistakes I, I made. I uh, uh, I had a a couple luncheons which were awesome, but in the very first luncheon, I fell on my sword. And I fixed it in the second luncheon so that uh, you won't have to go through the pain that I went through. What happened to me was I uh, uh, got, I had 37 blue slides, as many of you know, that I, I showed the potential private lenders. And when I got to the last slide, um, I just said, let's have lunch because I was buying them lunch. Um, you see, they needed some uh, direction from me and I needed some feedback from them. And I didn't get it. And so for the next couple of weeks, I'm on my phone trying to figure out who's in or who's out. And it's actually the wrong posture uh, to attract private lenders. In my second lunch, and I fixed that, and I came up with a form that um, uh, allowed them to give me some feedback. And that's just a, a very simple example of what happened to me early on. And, um, and even though this webinar is not about uh, attracting private lenders. Uh, it is about managing the private lender process and therefore growing your business, keeping private lenders, and, and making you phenomenally wealthy and successful. Uh, along the way, uh, when I got out and became a, a speaker, a national speaker, my students began to start to ask me questions. And some of the questions that I have come up is, what documents do the lenders get? What closing costs are involved? Um, should you give the lenders an appraisal? How do you do, deal with a promissory note? When do your payments start and when do they stop? And when does interest start and stop? In fact, I got that uh, recently in a, in a workshop. In fact, I do a lot of uh, uh, workshops uh, to RIA groups around the nation. And In fact, that question there comes up virtually in, in every one. Uh, do you put a mortgage on the house? That's another question that comes up in every workshop. Uh, how do you handle the lender's money? Uh, uh, do you do it personally or, or not? Uh, do you set up a, a second mortgage with another lender if the first lender isn't funding your rehab cost? How do you uh, handle the IRA money so it stays in the lender's IRA? And um, how do you handle escrow money? Uh, Year-end 1099s and other tax paperwork that will affect you and your lenders? You know, and many, many, many other questions, I'm sure ones that uh, you wanted to ask. My my goal is to provide answers to you uh, through this webinar. And right now, 
you get to do something that I never had an opportunity to do, and that's learn from somebody else's mistakes. So uh, here's what you're going to take away in this webinar. Uh, number one is um, a process for uh, private lending procedure. There's six management processes uh, that I've, I've sorted out, and that's exactly the flow of, of this training. Number two is buying the property with private lenders money. Number three is step by step. Uh, you know, what, how do you manage the process? It's all in the details. Number four is uh, what steps do you go with the private lender to sell the property? Number five is the IRA money and that's the pot of gold for us. So you, you, you desperately need to tap into that. And number six, uh, when the tax man cometh, uh, how do you handle that? So these represent the entire private lender experience from beginning to end. And who wants to know more? Who, who wants to know the complete management process to easily, quickly uh, use private lender money? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to be teaching you on this web, webinar. So let's get started here. Process number one, the private lending procedure. The first big uh, idea is to make life easier on you and your private lenders. You know, your private lenders only have to really do two things. One is send in a check or send in the money and then their job is to cash a bigger check everything else you should be responsible for at least that's the way i structured my business with private lenders who likes the idea of sending your lenders big checks but cashing even bigger checks yourself no i'm sure every one of you and that's what this is all about quick tip on determining how uh, interested private lenders are well I use an interest form like that one you just saw there. Uh, one to gauge how much time you need to uh, invest to make them a lender. And that interest form is exactly the one I talked about a second ago that I didn't have uh, in that very first luncheon. And the interest form asks them whether they're in or out, uh, how much money they want to loan, and, uh, and some other key questions out there that just uh, it's pretty basic questions, but it gives me a foundation on where they're coming from. So that gives you an overview of the process. Now let's talk about buying the property with private lenders' funds. Um, number one is you got to obviously find a, a, a property. Number two is you transfer the funds um, to the closing table. And number three is you create a promissory note. Uh, that one, um, I uh, I let my uh, typically used to let my closing agent do it, and then uh, since I like to prorate uh, the payments so I can line the payments up to the fifteenth of the month, uh, what happens now is I actually create the document and then I take it to closing, assemble the office and closing documents, and then uh, sending checks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a a look at each one of these, and so. On these five steps on buying, uh, if you haven't taken any notes, just uh, I'd write them down, and uh, uh, so you've got yourself covered. Uh, once I found a property, what do I do? Well, there's two simple checks. I, uh, I steps. I do a title check, and I get an an after repaired value appraisal. Now, what's that? Well, you know, you can get an as is appraisal, or you can get an after repaired value appraisal, and I like to get the after repaired value. What I do is I make a list of the repairs that I'm going to do on the property and then I send it over to a, an appraiser and I look for an appraiser that's uh, uh, right on the numbers. I don't want somebody that gives me a balloon appraisal. I don't want somebody that gives me a low ball appraisal. I'm looking for somebody that's uh, dealing with reality and gives me a fair appraisal. And so uh, same appraiser that the banks use in town. Now, on this after repaired value appraisal, just so you know, um, I used to give it to every one of my private lenders. Now, I don't give them the whole appraisal. I just give them the first, uh, the top few pages. But um, to be candid with you, I, I don't do that anymore. I uh, didn't think they cared about it, and, uh, and so I quit doing it. Now, if they asked for it, I'd give it to them. But what you need to know uh, that's critical is I always, always, always get an appraisal whether they get a copy or not. Why? Because I want it in my file to put a stake in the ground on what that property was worth the day I bought it. And therefore, the, so the private lender can see in case there's ever any problems in the future, which I've never had. 
but in case they have any questions, uh, I can always show them uh, that I didn't over leverage uh, the property. So let's go back to that first time, the, uh, uh, the second item of transferring the funds. Money should be transferred directly to the closing agent. It does not, does not, does not come to you. And that's very important. And let, let me explain um, that I don't want you, and we're going to touch on this when I go through this, I don't want you taking the checks personally up front. You, you promised that this thing would be, uh, the deal that uh, the money would be secured by real estate. And I want, and these folks are your bank, and I want, it, want it, the money handled just like a bank does. They don't send the money out early. We go to closing, and that's where the paperwork's distributed, and so is the, uh, uh, the money. And so uh, they uh, make the, uh, the wire out to uh, uh, the closing agent, and it goes into the closing agent escrow account. Uh, I've got a new uh, property purchase form, and I'll show you a copy of that in just a second. And then uh, I've got an escrow uh, account for repairs because I'm borrowing the repair money. Um, the property purchase form, this is a form that uh, I created, and what happens is um, uh, you need to send information over to the closing agent, and you also need to send information over to the insurance company. And so um, I get everybody on the same page And what I, with this form. What I did was I put them both on the same piece of paper. Many times what will happen to you is, A, you don't have a form, or B, you end up with one form to the closing agent, and then you put this virtually the same information on a on a second form, and it goes over to your insurance company. Well, I don't do that. I put them all in one, and I just fax it twice. Saves a lot of time effort, and also what it also does is is put a system in place in my company. Now, creating the promissory note. Well, some of the information that'll be on the promissory note is the specifics of the loan, an outline of your payment structure. Um, you can consider prepayment possibilities. Now you need to know that uh, I do not have a prepayment clause. Uh, I use it actually as a marketing tool to where I don't charge a prepayment penalty because many of the folks I'm dealing with have bank CDs and their number one fear is getting hurt by the bank because of their prepayment penalty. So I don't have one. Now I need to tell you in all fairness that a lot of other uh, national speakers that have private lenders and a lot of my students do have a prepayment penalty. And so you might consider that. It doesn't need to be high. It's not gonna, you know, if somebody wants their money back early, uh, all you have to do is, is take one lender off and replace them with a second lender. and. Uh, you don't have to check title because you did it when you bought the property and uh, and you own the property and so I would uh, yeah, so your closing your your closing cost to transfer funds is, is very low but I, I see some people will charge five hundred dollars you just need to make the decision on uh, on what you want to do you might have a, a safety clause in there in case your payments are delayed um, and uh, and the uh, just so you know the lender gets the original promissory note. I didn't know that when I got started. I always like to keep all originals. And what I found out was with the promissory note, they deserve it. And they should get that. You get the copy. Now, probably one of the biggest debatable things on a promissory note is whether or not to sign it personally. Um, when I got started, I thought it was only fair to sign it personally. Why? Because... Uh, the people are many times putting their uh, life savings or retirement savings with me. And um, I thought, you know, if they have a stake in it, I should have a stake in it too. So I, uh, I start out by signing personally on the promissory notes, and I haven't stopped. I, I still continue to do that. Now, what I need to share with you is um, I have talked to other folks, uh, one of those being an SEC enforcement officer, who um, um, encouraged me, and you got to understand, their job is to protect the lender, not the, the real estate investor. And he encouraged me actually not to sign on it personally. He says you ought to put it in your, in your company's name. So um, on this one, uh, you're going to have to see what you feel comfortable with and handle it accordingly. 
what I'm doing is I'm laying out the facts, giving you some some guidelines on it, and letting you decide on on how you want to do that, this on the promissory note. Now let's talk about the closing documents and and uh, and office information. Um, you should create a lender packet uh, to give to the lender. Uh, in it would obviously be the 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 key document, the original promissory note. Um, if you decide to use assignment of rents, then that would be in there also. Now I don't. I've never done that, never started, and uh, uh, probably never will. And but you need to decide if uh, if that would make your lenders feel more safe and secure and comfortable with dealing with you. Then then you could include it. it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, it's probably fair, isn't it? Uh, any other relevant documents think of the insurance bundle, the title insurance policy. I always get lender title insurance. Now, you know, if you look at the mechanics of the, of the process, uh, when I order up money from a private lender, they send in enough money to cover the uh, purchase price, the all of the repairs, all the closing costs. And part of the closing cost is what? <laughs> the title insurance policy. And uh, then I also borrow uh, a little extra in case I miss my repair number. I call it contingency money. But on this title insurance, obviously, they pay for it up front in the money that I borrow. And then uh, it's a loan, and uh, I need to pay that back. So eventually the money gets paid back to the lender. Uh, but I'm also paying interest on it, but I don't have to come out of my own pocket on that. Uh, I would uh, <clears throat> strongly recommend that you send a thank you note. Uh, personally signed note um, for them start off in a, a, a you know good a rapport good relationship with a private lender because they don't know how this is going to roll out until they see it happen once and then obviously the recorded mortgage from the closing agent you know even if you don't uh, even if you don't have this packet and everything in it um, you know let's say for an example a recorded mortgage and you give it to the lender it's still your job to make sure that the lender gets a hundred percent of the documents that you deem that they should get so uh, it's going to come back to you you don't want to do everything right and then all of a sudden miss a document or somebody else is typically what happens somebody else doesn't send them an insurance binder somebody else doesn't send them the recorded mortgage and the lender is going to look to who you know they're going to look to you because uh, you're the one that borrowed the money and so if the uh, documents aren't there, uh, you're the one that's going to get tagged for it. So you need to make sure that you don't make any lender nervous because they didn't get what they should have got. Uh, some other documents, uh, and this is for you, is the HUD. Uh, you get the HUD-1, not the lender. I have never, ever, ever given a lender the HUD statement, and I don't think you should either. Uh, number two is the after-repaired value appraisal just like I said before I always get it I used to give it to the lenders I don't do it anymore you can decide on that one which way you want to go and then finally a uh, an item maybe you've never heard about um, is the uh, uh, UCC1 filing now let's talk about that um, you, everyone knows that when you uh, uh, buy a property uh, and you got a private lender that there is a recorded mortgage on the property uh, and also you have a promissory note and the promissory note leans against the mortgage meaning that if, when you go to sell the property that the private lender gets paid off uh, on the property because they've got a mortgage on it so that is recorded the UCC1 actually is um, uh, a similar document that uh, uh, where you record that you have a private lender on the property and um, I'll tell you the way I do that is uh, the county I'm in you have a recorded mortgage but for the UCC one I do that down at the state house uh, in the capital and what will happen is I send in uh, a check and send some money to them and then I can uh, when I buy or sell a property then I uh, uh, do the UCC one, or when you sell it's a UCC three. And um, what they do is, is in the state of Ohio where I'm at, they charge twelve dollars to do that, and they will have this pool of money that I sent in, and they will just deduct 
from that um, uh, what uh, uh, the fee, the twelve dollars. So every time I buy or sell, and I do it online, so uh, you don't need to, uh, your closing agent to do that. Even though many of them will be happy, happy to do it. Um, just a point on the uh, uh, packet that your lender is going to get, which we had on the other page. As original documents, as the original promissory note, I would highly consider having that delivered with a messenger or somebody out of your office, but uh, wouldn't recommend sending it uh, uh, through the mail. I'd prefer to make sure that you get it into your lender's hands. Uh, later, I'll, I'll be showing you where you can get a copy of all these forms without having to track each one of them down like I did when I got started. Now here's a sample of a uh, promissory note to a lender. Um, I would uh, I would encourage you to have something like this for your folks. Now, sending checks. Let's talk about that. Uh, I use QuickBooks Pro as my accounting software in the office. Um, you don't have to use that one, but I would recommend that you have some type of accounting software. Interest usually begins the date of closing to buy and um, ends the day of closing to sell. And I send uh, my checks to the private lenders on the 15th of the month. Now, what happens is um, I, my exit strategy is, is rent or rent to own. And sometimes I, I get a chance to sell something outright. But typically, uh, I do rent to own. And uh, so I'll have checks coming in. And people were working off credit bruises and save up for a down payment and then eventually buy the property. But I don't know how it is in your uh, city, but um, where I'm at, uh, my tenant checks that come in on the 1st, um, they're late. <laughs> I would imagine they're late where you're at too. Well, if you're dealing with a bank, uh, or uh, you know your, your payments are due on the 1st typically, well, that math doesn't work for me. Tenant checks coming in on, on the 1st and, and mortgage payments going out on the 1st and the tenant's late and i got to get it in my pocket. I don't like that. So what I did was I realized that I I could set the date any time I wanted with a private lender because uh, I'm setting the financing terms. And so what I did early on was I, I have the checks to the private lenders due on the 15th of the month. Therefore, the... Uh, Tenant checks are coming in on the 1st, and the checks out to the private lenders uh, go out to the 15th of the month. And to set that up, I have to prorate the first check. Now, I said a few minutes ago that I handle the promissory notes, and this is exactly the reason why. is because my closing agent wanted me, rather than working back and forth and back and forth to get this set up, they just would prefer if I'd go ahead and put the proration note at the bottom of the promissory note so that I can uh, set up all future payments for the 15th of the month. Now let's get into step three, which is getting into some of the details on uh, dealing with, with private lenders. Um, what I'm going to go through is these items right here. Office administration, office reports, and keeping your lenders happy. So let's talk about the office first. I'm going to go through each one of these. Um, I use a check sheet for each aspect of my business. And I'll give you a sample one here in just a second. I uh, uh, hire good employees. I have a system on how I hire folks. And um, uh, I've got uh, employees that have been with me. Um, you know, One right now for seven years, another one for six years, another one for three years. And then I also delegate tasks, but the only way you can really delegate successfully is if you've got systems set up, and that's what I've done in my business is I've set up systems. And in fact, if you take a look at what I'm teaching you right now, I'm teaching you my system. So let me go through a, sa a sample of a, a, a form with you right now. This is 21 steps on how to purchase a property. And let me point a couple things out on this. Uh, right up here in uh, step four we're notifying the private lender to send in funds um, I get real detailed I mean even down here I've got some uh, um, uh, phone numbers and uh, uh, you should have a check sheet on how you purchase properties too 
you know, by now, I hope you understand how much I rely on checklists and 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 you should realize just how essential they are in running an efficient and profitable business. And so I'd like to have you make a note right now that you need to create, create check sheets. How do I buy a property? How do I sell a property? How do I hold an open house? How do I evict somebody? If you've got that, how about how, how about the rehabbing? I have a, a, a sheet on, on um, a property inspection sheet. I have another page on, on amounts on rehab, and I have standard amounts for various categories. For an example, on electrical. When I go into a property, i got four numbers I can put down. One, zero. Uh, number two is if I need receptacles and lighting fixtures, it's $750. If I need a, a box, a new box, 850 bucks. If I need both of those, I add those two together. Now, granted, the deals you'll be doing, some of you doing commercial, uh, your, your dollars in your area is going to be different. The point I'm trying to make here is a system. I recommend that you have check sheets. I recommend that you have systems for, uh, so that you can take the chaos out of your business. Let's talk about some office reports. I got three reports that I love. Number one is the private lender and property list, which which lists out what properties private lenders are on. And therefore, let's say for an example, and this only happens about once a year, some private lender says, hey, I want my money back. Well, I can go to this report, rather than digging through the files, I can go to this one report and it shows me all the property that that private lender has their money on. And so, let's say i got a private lender that's got uh, money on three different properties. Well, at a blink of an eye, I know exactly how much and which properties they've got their money on. It's a great tool. I'll show you a picture of it here in just a second. Closings versus lenders report. I've got a report that um, matches up the lenders to the closings. And then I've also got a report that's called the key indicator report. And I'll show you a copy of that. Here's the, uh, the one that has the list of uh, lenders and what properties are on and a quick glance just like I said I can see what properties are on how much money they got the uh, the closings versus lenders report is actually a series of three reports packaged together and one is it's got a list of the closings coming up for buying and selling number two is a list of private lenders that have money in queue <clears throat> they want to loan money to me but it's not on a property yet. And then uh, there's a third section out there of people that I think would be good lenders or somebody that's, that I've talked to but they haven't committed yet. And I, I put them out there uh, as a, a follow-up section. And on this report, I guess the best way to describe this to you is just imagine in my office there's two conveyor belts coming through the office. One conveyor belt has all the properties I'm getting ready to buy on it. The other conveyor belt has all the private lenders that I have in queue. And this report is my management tool to match up the lenders and properties. So you can imagine in the year I bought 69 properties out there, um, I had a lot of lenders and a lot of uh, properties to, to match up and uh, just a, a, an invaluable tool. And finally, the third report is what I call my key indicator report. This report contains a wealth of information from all different areas uh, of the company in a spread, spreadsheet form. And here it is. Let me, uh, I know this is an eye chart, but, you know, every year we ought to put together a plan for, uh, for the year. And let me show you uh, how this report, I put it together. These two rows right here are the lenders you know in my world you know how many lenders and how many dollars do I have coming in so the the first row is the number of lenders the second row is the number of dollars and then rows three and four are the properties how what is the number of properties I plan on buying per month and and of those when I buy them what is the equity within those and then Rows five and six, as you would imagine, are the sales, the number of properties I, I would sell, and the um, uh, the actual money that I made from that. And so 
what I use this report for, obviously, is to track my progress of, of how much money I've got coming in from private lenders and, um, and how I'm keeping up with spending it. This has been an awesome report. In fact, it, it uh, uh, helped me make the decision to hire an acquisitions manager because I had so much money coming in I, uh, from private lenders, I couldn't spend it all. And so I uh, uh, hired uh, a gentleman that had only purchased two properties, personal residence, before uh, I hired him. And he hired in in mid-September, from mid-September to Christmas, he bought 23 properties spending my money. How many of you would like to have somebody uh, out there spending your money buying properties, which is how we make, make our money, right? You know, I wish I'd have had these forms when I uh, was early in my career. Um, I do have all these available to my students, so uh, you can leverage my work for your success. And the last item, happy lenders. You know, close all your loans with professionals. Don't give out um, escrow agents uh, the lender contact information. Let me talk about that for a second. What I do is I stay between my lender and the outside world. Uh, I don't want anybody potentially misleading, contaminating my private lender. So all communication channels come through me to my private lender, but there is one exception that I make, and that is if the uh, uh, closing agent wants proof of funds. And the private lender might be sensitive about giving me information to give to the closing agent. So if that request comes up, I step out of the middle. If they want to talk personally to my private lender, let them talk. And then once that conversation is done, I step back in uh, the middle. But uh, the message here is I wouldn't give out your private lender contact information uh, to anyone except for in that scenario. Uh, don't send your lender, let, lender the closing statements like we talked about. Don't give uh, them any extra documents that they shouldn't have. And also don't hide facts that can put the lender money in jeopardy. Don't get careless uh, or miss any closing documents. Don't make false claims or amplify the truth, obviously. Rotate your lenders. Well, you know, um, the uh, your lenders, you got to think about putting them back in play. If, if you've got a lender that's been on a property and um, uh, then they get their money back and now you've got a new lender out there that has never been with you or on a property, I'd like to get the new lender out there because let them experience your program and then that way once they get through it the first time they understand it. Um, and I wouldn't always keep putting, even if you had a bunch of people giving you money, I would keep putting the same one on all the property. I'd rotate them so they all get a chance to, to make more money. Uh, you handle collections, obviously. Don't allow lenders to collect any payments. And just bottom line is the relationship with lenders is everything. You know, I treat my private lenders like gold. The bottom line is to be honest and have integrity with your private lenders and do that and they'll be happy. You know, here's a happy lender, right? Yeah, <laughs> got to have some fun, right? Let's talk about selling the property and the process with, uh, with private lenders. Number one is you contact your lender. You uh, calculate the interest owed, and you send in the payoff letter. In fact, this might surprise you, but I do the payoff letter. Why? Because I probably know the numbers better than the private lender. And um, I, like I told you right at the outset, I want to take all the work off my private lenders. And so uh, I do the payoff letter. Now, sometimes the closing agents will want them to sign off on it. That's awesome. No problem with that. Um, but, uh, in fact, you might even want to send it to them and ask them for an okay on it. But, to be honest with you, it might confuse them more than, than help them. So, you do what you think's fit. And then you get the money back back into play. Um, it might seem like common sense, but communication with your private lender is, is everything. In fact, let me tell you about a neglected uh, lender out there that I had. This might help you avoid a problem that I had. What happened was, I had a, a lender had money on a property. We were getting ready to close in May of one year. And um, the closing agent wanted the lender to sign off on a satisfaction, have it notarized, and send it back. And the lend lender lived in another part of my state, so we had to overnight the information to them. 
they signed it, notarized it, sent it back. Well, what happened was we didn't close. And uh, the only problem of it is, was we didn't uh, tell the, the lender that. And so uh, time moved on. In August, I got a terse fax from the lender saying, where is my check? Now think about what the lender was thinking. They signed a satisfaction and money never showed up. They're sitting there waiting on their money to show up. What had happened was, I thought my office staff was taking care of this. They didn't. Got by them. They didn't uh, do anything with it. And uh, the bottom line, it's, it's my responsibility, isn't it? So, um, what happened was, uh, I sent a case of uh, Omaha Steaks to the lender, apologized, and uh, told them that we were going to close, it just hadn't happened yet. There was some problems with some paperwork that had to be cleared up. The uh, closing came about, and we had lost the satisfaction. I had to send another overnight package to have another notarized satisfaction. Needless to say, lender wasn't happy. What's the, happy? What's the bottom line? Communication. If we would have told the lender right up front, we would have avoided all that stress and frustration. Let's talk about how you calculate interest. This is something that a lot of real estate investors uh, uh, don't understand, and uh, they think they do right at the outset, but then when they sit down and think about paying the lender, it's like, whoa, how do we do this? In my world, you got uh, three options. Option number one is they get paid when you get paid, which means we uh, let the money accrue and uh, until we sell the property. And once we sell the property, then they get they get paid. And that's based on the number of days in the loan. And I'll give you the formula for this in just a second. Number two is uh, monthly payments. I pay on the 15th of the month. Now, what I do is I let the lender pick, and I pay a split rate. I pay a higher rate if they let the money accrue, a lower rate if, they'll, um, if they want monthly payments. And normally I'm just a couple percentages difference, but there is a difference in the rate. And then since I have a rent-to-own exit strategy and I can make monthly payments, then I can offer that to my lenders. Now, if you are in a retail scenario where you're going to retail property or you're not having income come in, then you can't offer monthly payments. I mean, all you can do is offer the, for the money to accrue. And then, finally, amortize the loan. And a lot of my students love this. If you're going to hold the property for a long period of time, I want you to pay low interest and amortize the loan. And so you just need to pick um, which one or a combination of those that you're com comfortable with. Let's talk about how you, you uh, uh, calculate interest for your lender. Let's say a lender owns uh, you $240,000 and you're paying 8% simple interest. Well, you take 8% times your $240,000, that's $19,200 a year that you're going to owe the private lender. You divide that by 365 days, that comes up to $52.60 a day in interest. If you're letting the, the money accrue, and let's say you have the money out for 293 days, and that's from the day to close to buy to day to close to sell, that means you would owe the lender $15,411 for the use of that money when you sell the property. But let's say you're going to go monthly payments. Well, I make things very simple. I take this annual interest of $19,200, and I just divide it by 12, comes up to $1,600 a month, and they get, and I pay them on the 15th of the month. Like I said a second ago, I only agree to interest payments when I have cash flow from tenants or tenant buyers. Payoff letter, you need to include the property address, the lender's name and address, date and dur duration of loan, interest rate, terms of the interest, calculation of total uh, payoff, and then a per diem. If you don't know what that is, that is uh, just uh, the interest or the amount per day uh, so that the closing agent can, if they if they uh, close a couple days early, then you got money coming back. If they close a week late or whatever, then they can calculate the additional interest and so, so they can get the numbers exactly fair and right for everybody.
So you're uh, paying off the lender and you're through, right? Nope. You're just getting started. Now you got to get their money back in play. I uh, try to use my lenders again within 30 days, but definitely don't neglect the new lenders. Like I said before, if you got somebody new that's never uh, had a chance with you, I'd get their money in place so you don't lose them, so they don't go away, and uh, and rotate your lenders. You know, satisfied lenders will generally be more willing to wait longer than the newer lenders because they know what's out there for them. Now, a final note on selling. I don't touch unsecured money. You know, I said before, if uh, you, don't, you don't have the money, uh, the check made out to you when you're getting ready to close to buy, but let's turn this around. Now you're getting ready to sell. And uh, let me tell you about um, uh, my Aunt Gertrude. Let's say you got an Aunt Gertrude in your life. And um, she's got money on a property. You're getting ready to sell it. And she says, oh, honey, just keep the money. I know you're good for it. Um, I'd rather keep this interest going. Well, let's take a look at what you agreed with Aunt Gertrude. You agreed to have her money secured by real estate, didn't you? And now, she's asking you to keep it unsecured. Well, here's, here's the bottom line. The bottom line is that if you agree to do that, you have just committed fraud in the eyes of the SEC. You know, I, I don't want you to uh, touch unsecured money. I want to make sure that the lender's money is secured and that you do what you promise. So that's the only right way to, to handle things. Let's talk about what I call the pot of gold, the IRA money, process number five. These are perfect lenders for us. IRA funds cannot be touched unless they are invested. They will earn interest at a rate of up to three times more than they earn in retirement accounts. I mean, let's look at what's going on out there. You know, what does a bank CD pay on an IRA? You know, they're next to nothing. You can pay three, four, five times what folks are receiving, um, you know, on other investments. All the earnings are either tax-deferred or tax-free. You know, Ross are tax-free. And all uh, pre-tax earnings can be reinvested to generate more money. In other words, here they get their money back from you. And now you got another investment. Now they got more to loan you because they get a higher rate of return. Let's talk about how the money's handled. Individual retirement account, uh, uh, mu they must use a custodian. The lender will direct their IRA funds to the closing agent through a custodian. So they work through this, this third party. And there are several custodians that you can choose from to use with your lenders. And... Um, what I want to tell you here is that uh, you need to work with a custodian that is friendly to real estate investors. You know, folks out there that have their, their money in an IRA, they uh, they might have it on a bank CD or in a, let's say, a, a Schwab account. Well, you know, CDs are invested in CDs. Schwab's invested in, in stocks. You want to find a company that is... Um, uh, friendly to real estate investors and have your private lender move the money into that custodian and then have them self-direct the money down to the closing table. Let's talk about the four types of IRA paperwork that you're going to need to be familiar with, with. And these aren't tough. They're really common sense. Number one is to open up the new account in this company that's friendly to real estate investors. So open up a new account uh, your private lender will do that, but uh, what I do is I handle all the paperwork and then have the private lender sign and put their account number and then overnight it in uh, to open up the new account. Number two is they got to fund the amount. So they got to roll their money over from either a 401k program or where the money is at uh, in a Schwab account or CD and, um, and uh, so that the, the new IRA account is funded. And then if the lender wants to add money or if you're making monthly payments, you will use what's called a contribution form. And the company I do business with, uh, the custodian, the, the contribution form looks like a check. And it's just a 
for information purposes, it gives puts the account number down of the lender and the, the amount so that the money gets into the right account. And then finally, the form that we all care about, which is the direction of investment. That gets the money to the closing table. And uh, that is a key document for all of us. You know, in my wealth management system, um, uh, it's a home study system I create. I go over every every one of these four types of paperwork in great detail and walk you through the entire process. I just don't have the time to go through all this information right now because of the time constraints and everything I want to get through with you. Um, when, uh, when you make interest payments, uh, whether it's monthly or whether you sell the property and everything goes back into the IRA account, I want to make sure that you know that the checks and um, the envelope on the on the uh, letter need to be made out in a certain way and this also is on the the mortgage and the promissory note so when the loan was made uh, you'll, you're gonna find that the custodians are, are are very 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 particular about the way uh, if the the things are recorded the things are in the promissory note and the checks coming back to them they want their name First, in this example here, I've just got the word custodian, depending on who you pick. FBO, which stands for the benefit of. Uh, so for the benefit of, and then the lender. Well, let's say it's me, it's Alan Cowgill. And then my uh, IRA account number. So uh, they're going to want these words in exactly that order, nothing left out. And that will make the custodians... Um, much more easy to work with. In fact, just so you know, I lost a uh, uh, one of my uh, uh, closing agents. We can close with uh, attorneys here in Ohio because of uh, them not getting this information correct on the promissory note and mortgage, and and we kept having to send the paperwork back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and it just delayed uh, so many uh, closings. Uh, we just got tired of fooling with them, and we just moved the business to a another attorney to close. You provide the closing agents with this information, the direction of investment signed by your IRA person, your lender, uh, the uh, payment coupon that we talked about, and uh, a satisfaction of mortgage. You know, I know most of you are going out and getting folks with IRAs as soon as this webinar is over, aren't you? I mean, this is a gold mine for us. Why? These people are the ones that don't need the monthly payments. you got to love that. And there is a phenomenal amount of money out there that you can tap into. And also, you know, they need you worse than you need them. They're getting such low rates of return right now that they really desperately need you. Well, let's talk about the taxes. And the reason I put this... Uh, in this webinar is because when I got started I was very confused about um, paperwork when it came to year-end taxes with the private lender. In fact, frankly, it's very, very simple and so what I'm going to do is take all the paint out of it for you and you're going to want to take notes uh, right now because this will save you um, a lot of, uh, of, of pain if you don't know this. 1099 forms you make them out when you disperse interest to your private lenders. It's 1099-INT. And let's say for an example, somebody loans you money, uh, and in that calendar year, you do not send them any interest payments. Therefore, in, in January of the following year, uh, you don't have to send a 1099. The only time you have to send a 1099 to your private lender is the when the calendar year, when you disperse interest. So if you're making monthly payments to somebody or if the property sells that they're on, then bang, you've got to make out a 1099 INT in January and send it to your private lender. Uh, that is the key document uh, for you when it comes to, for taxes, when it comes to the private lender. But I've got some other ones here that I thought I'd just share with you. Uh, so some of you might not know. 1099 uh, miscellaneous, that's for independent contractors, uh, which is just another 1099 form. It's M-I-S-C. So if you got in, 1099, if you got independent contractors that work for you and, and uh, they made a certain amount of money, they aren't employees, 
but they're contractors. Then you got to send a, a 1099 to them. Uh, 1098s. Well, if you take uh, mortgage interest uh, in, uh, then uh, uh, you know if you uh, for an example in in my state, I I can have people on land contracts. Maybe in yours, it's contract for deed, and uh, uh, they're making monthly payments. Well, then I need to send out a 1098 uh, for those for those folks. And then to uh, uh, get the information to the IRS, you not only have to send it to those folks, but you also have to send it out uh, to the government so they can tick and tie everything together. It's a 1096 uh, form. Now, just a reminder that interest paid to private lenders is an expense for you and your company, and therefore you get to deduct it for tax purposes. So it's actually a kiss for you, isn't it? So um, uh, that's kind of, you know, it's kind of the good news on the thing. Now here's the uh, 1099 INT form. Um, just what you see here is the steps that you would go through to fill that out. This is just basic tax documents, and you can go out to the internet and find these. Um, you know, here's a 1098 form, 1096. Uh, but uh, frankly, I, I don't fool with this stuff. Now the first year I was very confused about it. Finally, I didn't know if they were t they were supposed to 1099 me or if I was supposed to 1099 them. Got that all sorted out the first year, and then after after that it's a piece of cake. I just turn everything over to my accountant and uh, and let them handle it for me. Uh, but you do need to know that the 1099 INT is for private lenders, and that's why I spent time on this uh, uh, tax portion. Uh, you know, we just discussed these six areas: the procedures for finding private lenders, their jobs to write a check and set back and get away for a bigger check, buying the property, they wire the money into closing, you don't touch the money coming in you have a formal closing uh, it's it's all in the details where I showed you uh, the, the reports that I love to use um, and also remember that 21 step check sheet back there on buying the property for, for item number two there I love that check sheet and my encouragement to you is to get check sheets in your business number four is selling the property and I talked to you about Aunt Gertrude and the fact that you can't uh, keep uh, her her money. You need to crank up your buying machine and get her money working again, but you can't keep her money to do that. So you got to return it to Aunt Gertrude, and then it's your job to get it going again. And and then the pot of gold, IRA money. Uh, you know you can attract money from uh, people that are quit retired or gotten laid off from their job, and they got these big 401ks. And uh, and I went through some of the paperwork, uh, the four key documents that you need. And frankly, when it comes to uh, IRA money, custodians, and private lenders, those four documents are, are the only four you really got to mess with. Uh, so it's fairly simple. And then uh, uh, the 1099 INTs, when it's, uh, uh, if you have dispersed interest in a calendar year, um, uh, then you got to give that to the private lender so that they can uh, turn that in as, as income. Or if it's a uh, IRA money, you know, it's tax deferred or tax free. As much as uh, what I've gone over, I simply don't have the time to go through the details like I do in a comprehensive private lending uh, wealth management system that I created. And I can't imagine trying to remember all this information here and hearing it just one time like many of you have. So even so, there is a lot I just uh, had to leave out, and hopefully you were taking notes. If you want, the best, want to best manage your private lender money without making the mistakes I made and without the worry that you'll lose a lender and a deal. Attending this webinar was a good first step for you, but you need all the information, not just what I had time to teach you uh, here. And by now, you should be wondering how you can get your access to all my management process step by step, as well as all the, the forms I use. What I want to talk to you about is the wealth management system, which houses all this information. And let me tell you about this. It was born out of necessity. This Wealth management system was developed because of the success my students were having acquiring private lenders. Uh, they had to play the role of a bank, and um, uh, so I had to become uh, uh, a recluse for two months and put this system together for them uh, because they had all those questions we talked about earlier and so many more. The system covers the entire A to Z proven process for managing private lenders. You know. It's kind of like a, a one-two punch. One punch is, is you acquire private lenders, and that's what everybody is out looking for and how to acquire private lenders. 
But the day you get your first private lender, then what? Well, you got to manage the process, and that's all those things that we just spent the last hour going through. This system gives you the power to manage a limitless amount of private lender money with the uh, competence and and com confidence of a seasoned banker. Uh, before we go any farther, you need to know the system is simple, easy, proven, and you can use it as soon as you, you get it. When you get this system, you'll use it immediately. There is no trial and error, no stress or fear of failure, no wasted time, money, or energy. It will save you hundreds of hours and thousands of wasted dollars. I know this firsthand. You know, which you understand the value of implementing a proven system that you can use time after time instead of developing it all from scratch. Just think about what we went through in the last hour. Imagine if you had to do that all yourself and more. You know, let me tell you what Marcia said. She said, Alan delivers an abundance of information that's completely useful for all investors in real estate business, in the real estate business. Alan is generous with his time and extra information. He does everything first class. It's a privilege to study with such a knowledgeable businessman. You know, some of what you'll be able to achieve with this system is this. Get a property appraisal at its after repaired value uh, every single time. And I go through that in detail in the system. Prevent any and all disputes with your lenders. I talked about the fact of how I treat my lenders and what I do to keep them happy. In fact, one of the things I didn't have time to cover was Alan's rules of thumb. And what, that, what does that mean? Well, when things happen out there, I have found that there's certain little things that I can do to make it right with the private lender and keep them happy. Let's say you got a delayed closing. You know, different things like that. How do you manage it? Let's say you got the private lender's money for a week because you do a wholesale. How do you manage that? Well, I cover all that in this home study system. The right time and the way to get the money from your lenders. The streamlining lender maintenance activities so they don't eat up your time. Always keep a positive cash flow. Correctly close escrow so the lenders can reinvest their money. And the ins and outs of setting up and using IRAs for your lender's benefit. Here's what you'll get. The Essential Guide to Managing Private Money Manual. It's a, it's a wonderful, easy-to-read manual that covers what you need to know about private lenders. Values $397 and an 8-pack of powerful CDs so you can handle the private lender process with ease. Value $299. In fact, that's the first thing I want you to get into is the audios. Complete IRA information, including key documents, forms, and reports, a value of $199, and a CD jam-packed with necessary information, letters, forms, spreadsheet, and templates, value of $99. Let me tell you about this, this CD. It is chock full of templates, form, checklist, etc. to streamline your business and save you a ton of time and tedious work. CD-ROM includes checklist for purchasing a property, the one I showed you, uh, my borrower-friendly promissory note, sample payoff letter, key indicator report, detailed lender report, private lender property li list report, money and queue report, closing schedule. That's the one where I talked about the two conveyor belts and the 1099s, INTs, and also the other uh, reports out there so that you know the tax documents and what, what goes where. Which of you wish you already had all these proven templates and forms and checks? Wouldn't that make your life easier if you had these sitting on your desk right now? Just think about that. What would you have to invest for a system that ensures success when dealing with private lenders, which is what the wealth management system is all about? You know, if you put it together yourself, it's going to take you about three months, but you got to have the experience to put it together first, don't you? you got to have the experience, and it's going to take you about three months to put it together. How do I know it takes that long? Well, it took me a while. And $10,000 because it costs. You know, time, time is money. Plus, you'll still have to prove that it works once you're done. So how about a fraction, an investment of what I just described there of only $1,197? Well, I don't charge that for this system, even though I could. This system sells on my website for $697, but you aren't going to have to pay that tonight. I want to make you guys an awesome deal. You know, plus, I've got some bonuses. When you invest in the wealth management system, you also get these three bonuses. Number one. SEC Compliance Q&A, $99 value. <clears throat> it's an audio CD and a 60-page and manual. Number two, a special report, how to avoid minefields and eliminate any chance of failing. $99 value Ta teaches you 
how to invest your money when you become wealthy and what not to invest in. That's the minefields out there. And number, number three is a second home study system, which is the million dollar secrets of the top real estate trainers. It's a manual and two audio CDs, but I got to tell you this. Uh, I got to limit this, these three bonuses, and I've got to limit it to the first seven folks that jump all over this. Why? Well, I want to work with people to take action. It, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a person that's wasteful. I don't want to throw money away, and, but I do want to encourage people to take action. And so the first seven folks are going to get these three bonuses. Oh, but I'm not through. I've got a mentoring certificate where you get my personal fax, personal email, where I will help you get this system up and going in the next 90 days. You jump into the audios, and then I want you to get a hold of me and start pounding me with questions. Here, once again, it's the first seven folks that jump all over this. Plus, a surprise bonus. I told you there were six processes I went through. There's actually a seventh, and the sixth system actually includes... Uh, a seventh process. The seventh is a special chapter that has bonus material that teaches you how to use IRA money to fund real estate deals. This information goes far beyond what I had a chance to discuss on this webinar. This one chapter will essentially give you an entirely new method of funding your deals. This system will pay for itself several times over the very first month by simply removing chaos and extra work, work and headaches and stress. You know how important that is from your life and your business. And when you close just one extra deal because of this system, you'll have a huge return on your investment just from that one deal. Here's what you need to do. Jump out right now and go to allensoffer.com forward slash wealth. Allens, www.alans, I made my name plural, allensoffer, O-F-F-E-R, Dot com and then put in a forward slash and wealth, W-E-A-L-T-H, all small letters, and invest in this complete wealth management system to guarantee you manage your lenders and their money efficiently, safely, and for everyone's best benefit. And then, isn't that what we want to do? I make this a win-win for you and your private lenders. Or call 800-584-3346 right now. I've got operators standing by to help you out. 1-800-584-3346. 3346. Jump all over this. Be one of the first seven. There's no reason you should miss out on those wonderful bonuses. Let me tell you what Lee Brown said. He said, I'm currently on the third listen through your wealth management system. It's truly been awesome. Thanks again. You know, it kind of says it all. It kind of says it all about this. You know, the biggest benefit is you're investing in a system. Proven, simple, easy to use. Plug it in and let it streamline and uh, work and help build your business. I'll keep it'll keep working for you time after time after time. So what would you have to invest for a system that ensures success? You know, I told you you'd have to spend three months after you've got experience and ten thousand hour plus trial and error, or the investment of six ninety seven. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two hundred dollars off of that. And you're going to get it for an unbelievably low price of four ninety seven. You can't beat this anywhere else. You go to the website, it's $6.97, you delay, and you don't get your order in now, you're going to miss out on that, and you're going to obviously miss out on the bonuses, because this thing here is going to go like wildfire, because people desperately need to get this in their hand. $497 for today and today only. Ironclad money-back guarantee. you got an unconditional guarantee, so that you have no reason not to take advantage of the system. Check the system out. For seven days after you get it, and if it's not for you, let me know, and I'll give you a prompt and courteous refund. No questions asked. I'm the one taking all the risks. There's zero risk on you. You are going to love the wealth management system. This thing is phenomenal. How do you get it? Well, you go to allensoffer.com forward slash wealth, W-E-A-L-T-H, allensoffer.com forward slash wealth. Write that down real quick. Or... Just call in. Talk to my operators, 1-800-584-3346. I've got everything time-stamped. I can tell the, the first seven that come in, whether you come in on the website or whether you make the call, I can match things up because, you know, like on the mentoring certificate, you know, I've got two businesses to run. I've got a family that I, that I love, and, um, and I've got gatekeepers that answer the phone for me so that I can be freed up to do other things. The people I take care of, the people that send me emails, are the folks that I give my email out to just like this 
so that I can personally take the time and effort to take care of them. I am very quick on answering questions. I love taking care of you, and um, I want you to be successful. But you got to be the first seven. You know, why miss out on those bonuses I just talked about? They're great bonuses, plus you get me. In fact, let me tell you what Michael said. He said, I honestly believe without Alan's system and e-tools, the success of my business is presently experiencing would turn to failure, and I would be out of business this year. You know, it's one thing to attract private lenders, but you don't want to be down into the nitty-gritty and, and turmoil of how to manage them. And, and that's what this system does. It helps you help them. What you receive is this. The Essential Guide to Managing Private Lenders, the manual that comes with this, uh, $397 value, and the eight-pack of, of uh, audios, which is me training you on how to manage the private lender process from A to Z. $299 value, complete IRA information, including key documents, forms, and reports, $199 value. SE, or the uh, CD-ROM filled with the forms you need, and probably one of the most important things in that is my spreadsheets. Remember those three management tools? I love those tools, and you will too. No point in you reinventing the wheel. I got them done for you. $99 value, plus the, the nearly $500 in free bonuses, plus the mentoring certificate, all for an investment of only $497. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. If it's not for you, check it out. If it's not for you, you can return it. But you aren't going to return it because it has the information you need. you got to take action today. The discount and the three amazing bonuses are available only immediately after this webinar. So make sure you take advantage of this offer today. you got nothing to lose. Remember, with my ironclad guarantee, there's no risk uh, to try out the system. Your option, you got option number one, is to do nothing and to work 24-7 to survive and figure this out on your own. You know, some of you folks um, that are listening don't have private lenders, but you might have this time next year. You might have them in six months, and and you're going to wish you got your hands on this system so that you can manage the process without guessing and getting it at this phenomenal offer. Option number two, stop everything you're doing. Spend the effort and hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars to, to develop the entire system yourself and then hope it works. You know, I think you felt tonight when I went through this, and I know I covered some of the information fairly quickly, but I know you probably felt like you were drinking out of a fire hose in some case. Just, you know, and I just hit the top of the iceberg. You know, I can't cover in the hour the, the information that's in the eight audios that are roughly an hour apiece. You know, I can't cover all that. You know, I can only do and deliver what I was able to do. You know, you need the home study system to take you to the next level with this. Or option number three Invest in a proven system for success with somebody that's been there and just plug it in and let it work for you. You know, the success is up to, do, it's up to you. Today, I can, you can decide to keep doing what you've always done and later wonder why you're not seeing more success. Or you can take action and move closer to your desired success by investing in yourself and your business. The question of it is, what kind of action are you going to take? Well, I think it's simple. I think you go to allensoffer.com forward slash wealth a l a n s o f f e r dot com forward slash wealth w e a l t h or call 1-800-584-3346 and get this system in your hands first thing i want you to do is peel into the audios and start listening to those just the audios alone will change the way you think when it comes to dealing with private lenders I want you to get into those and, and understand the process. And then you can, you get into the manual next. And the manual is very simple, like I said before. Easy to read and, and uh, it gives you the details that you need. And then get into the forms. You know, you get a form CD with all the forms, my special reports. Get those out, those Excel spreadsheets, start filling them in. Go to the key indicator report, put your plan together. How many private lenders do you want to have? What, what kind of money are you looking at? How many properties are you going to buy? And that report, what I described in those three different groupings that I circled, you know, it's kind of like a waterfall. you got to have private lenders that feed into your purchase, and once you get them bought, then you can go ahead and, and obviously sell the property. So that's the way I designed that report. It's a wonderful tool, wonderful tool. And the one where I talked about two conveyor belts coming through my offer, you see, the, what I'm telling you is everything's done for you. Everything's done for you. 
And, and you folks out there that are currently have private lenders, you know, you need, even if you've had them for years, you need to get this system because I'll bet you there's things you've missed and this system will clear that up. Well, I'll tell you what, I appreciate you guys being on the call. You need to, you need to be one of the first seven folks because I, I, frankly, I don't want you to miss out on that. But on the other hand, I, uh, I can't offer it to everybody. It just, uh, time-wise on, on my personal email and my time, it just doesn't make sense. So I, I found over the years that I need to cap how many folks I can work with so I, I don't uh, uh, spend all my time uh, working with folks on, on email because i got other things I need to do in my life. And, and, and besides, I know if I work with people that take action, they're the ones that are going to go out and, and uh, make things work and, and plug the system in. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. Check the system out. If it's not for you, I'll give you a prompt and courteous refund. Well, I appreciate you being on the training, and I hope you learned a lot. Uh, you know, just uh, get the system and get started. It's the only way I can help you from here on out. Well, to your wealth, and thank you.